Yeah, because I got to turn on the mic. Is he ready? All right. Welcome, everybody. Uh, so glad you could come join us here. Um, the title of this talk is CERN and Science Clouds in Europe with Tosca, OpenStack Heat, and Heat Translator. And uh, this is some work that's involved uh, different companies slash organizations and different standards bodies and, of course, open source technologies like OpenStack. Um, I'm going to just really quick introduce my co-presenters here. Uh, it's uh, Ricardo Rocha from CERN. There's uh, Matt Rakowski. I think he's hiding. He's uh, an IBMer. Uh, anybody know Sadev from Heat Community? The Sadev Zala from IBM as well. Uh, not a That's great. Um, so, what we we actually got together at the last summit, and there was some interesting things going on. A uh, big project in the CERN and Indo Indigo, with, um, having this European infrastructure that was going to go across clouds. Some of them OpenStack. Some of them not OpenStack. So now you're looking at heterogeneous cloud infrastructures and what can be done to exploit those. Um, and so in having discussions, and I, don't, I won't forget the discussions because it was at uh, OpenStack in Tokyo, and I remember we were late to getting the lunch, and we had to get these box lunches that I really did not enjoy. It was all veggie. I don't know if anybody else remember those. You know, you took one bite, uh, I'll go, just go hungry. Um, but anyway, we had really great conversation, um, and you know, looking at Tosca, something that Matt rakowski has been working on for years, as sort of the specification language for orchestrating cloud infrastructure and applications that can work across infrastructures, works with OpenStack, works with other, works with uh, non-OpenStack infrastructures. So looking at working together to be able to use that across those uh, heterogeneous cloud infrastructures, and then how do you map and make that work? Well, turns out we had a, pulled a rabbit out of the hat. We've been working for years on a couple of sub-projects that have made their way into OpenStack Heat, uh, Heat Translator and Tosca Parser that One's looking at you know doing the parsing and one's doing the translating to map the world to hot templates and and these were embraced for a couple of years with this dream of we're going to do this so that we can funnel more stuff to OpenStack. So if we can find a way to translate the stuff to hot, guess what? We can go run this on OpenStack. So if you look at what we're going to talk about in this presentation, um, Sadev's going to come in and, and talk about the work that we've done in those sub-projects of OpenStack Heat, the Tosca parser and the Heat translator. Then Ricardo is going to talk about how they use this in the big with Project Indigo and, and the work that CERN's been doing to, to work uh, you know, across these different heterogeneous cloud infrastructures. And then he's going to show some demos off YouTube, so anybody can go see them, but he's going to show some demos. And then Matt here is going to talk about the latest things going on with the Tosca specification, which is sort of pulling this all together. So at this point, I'm going to hand over to Sadev. Thanks, Brad. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Sadev Zala. I'm a software engineer at IBM in Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm a technical lead for Tosca Parser and Heat Translator. Both are sub-projects of Heat. So I'll brief about what they are, uh, some of the enhancements, uh, you know, the significant enhancement we made in the Mitaka, and uh, we have an excellent uh, momentum going on working with different projects in OpenStack. So I'll just brief about that as well. Um, so as you may know, there are two different Tasca profiles. This is Tasca Simple Profile in YAML, uh, and there is an NFV profile. The simple Profile is uh, uh, it's, it's focused on more general specification, topology, orchestration, whereas NFV Profile extends the Simple Profile for NFV-specific needs. Uh, parser uh, basically supports parsing both of those profiles. It basically reads uh, different uh, Tasca entities, you know, Tasca node types, capabilities, uh, interfaces, uh, policies, group, uh, any custom types, and it basically produces uh, in-memory graph of uh, different nodes and uh, relationship among them. <clears throat> uh, thanks to the development team, we had uh, two point releases uh, during Mitaka cycle, uh, point three and four. Um, and uh, we had uh, significant enhancements. Uh, the most notable one was uh, support for uh, NFV. 
Um, Tosca seems uh, getting incre increasingly popular in NFV community, and in, in last summit in Tokyo, we had a meeting with, uh, uh, with the Tacker project team. Uh, Tacker is an uh, OpenStack mainstream project now. <clears throat> Uh, about uh, uh, extending the support of Tasca parser to uh, NFE profile. You know, originally the parser was only for the simple profile. Uh, as part of that meeting, uh, we had a collaborative efforts and uh, you know between uh, Tacker uh, uh, developers and ourselves. And now we support the NFV. Uh, just real quick, uh, tomorrow we are giving a brown bag uh, tech talk just on NFV. Uh, so if you are interested to know more, more about uh, NFV architect, uh, you know, how Tacker is using these projects, parser and translator, please join us. It's at 2.15 p.m. tomorrow in Brown Bag Room. Uh, besides NFV, uh, we continue developing against the Tasca simple profile specs. Uh, we added the new features to parse uh, things like Tasca groups, which is a notion in Tasca to group uh, different nodes so that uh, common operations can be applied on them as well as something like policies can be applied on, on, on a group. Uh, we also added uh, parsing support for Tasca namespace, nested properties, and you know, uh, working with the uh, with the uh, uh, project Indigo uh, members uh, like CERN and other uh, folks. Uh, uh, they are bringing a lot of good use cases. A lot of uh, they use a lot of custom types. So uh, as part of that, we did uh, found a certain enhancement need, and we took them as in bug fixes uh, to uh, strengthen uh, you know a relationship uh, between custom types and normative types. Um, we also, with point three, we're doing a full validation of Tasker templates. So now we give you a compile uh, errors. Uh, you know, when you validating the template, um, uh, support for nested imports, and uh, you know, Tasker parser is uh, it's basically uh, you know used as a library, but uh, and, and uh, we still created a shell utility program uh, just for uh, folks to play with it. Uh, parser was a new new project created. Uh, Couple months before uh, uh, Mitaka uh, summit, so uh, during this uh, cycle, we did create the utility, and we have a few other things available on master, like support for load balancer, range type, etc. Um, moving to heat translator, um, so the translator project was created a couple years back. The goal was uh, to enable deployment of. Uh, uh, Non-heat workloads uh, by mean of translation to heart. As you can see on the right side, there's a snippet uh, showing uh, Tasca Hello World template and uh, how it's uh, it got translated to uh, heart. <coughs> uh, again, thanks to the team. You know, we had two releases, 0.4 and 0.3 during the Metaka cycle. We typically have those rele releases in parallel to the Tasca parser. Uh, though heat translator uses Tasca parser PyPy, so there are usually uh, three weeks gap in between them uh, to enable uh, translation for the features added in the parser. Uh, but the new features, you know, similar uh, to what I was saying in parsing side, uh, we added translation for NFV for policies. We completed work on the OpenSec client side uh, with the new test suites. Um, I just want to uh, mention that um, you know we do run into challenges when we translate. Uh, there, are, there is no one-to-one -one mapping for everything. Uh, you know things like uh, Tasca has a constraint base of flavor and images, whereas Heat uh, takes flavor and image, uh, the name itself, uh, or for example the key name property of Nova. Uh, it's commonly used in templates in Hot, uh, whereas there is no such concept in Tasca. So now we you know we. Uh, we basically let user provide uh, those key name uh, as an uh, you know, argument to the translator, and we basically set that accordingly into the heart. Um, uh, also, during the point three, we are now uh, dynamically uh, dynamically uh, querying against Nova to get the flavor. I'm going to actually talk on uh, that in the next slide with some example there. But we keep adding uh, new command line options to make uh, Translator more user friendly. We added a few uh, during the uh, Metaka cycle, you know, smaller one, but, uh, you know, things like only validating the template. If someone don't want to translate it, but only validate, they can do it. Uh, they can save uh, the translator output to a preferred location. Um, on master, uh, that, that's something uh, we really wanted to do it, uh, is uh, making deployment uh, uh, automatically from translator. 
So for folks who are translating Tasca uh, to Hot, uh, now with the deploy option, you can actually uh, deploy it as well. So we basically underneath, we just uh, invokes the stack create uh, and, and let it uh, take it from there and deploy the template. Um, other things like uh, support for Ansible and Puppet, uh, the folks at uh, CERN in um, you know, the Project Indigo, they, you, they, they use Ansible heavily. So thanks to them, they added the support uh, to uh, uh, basically set you know, the group for the Ansible uh, and Puppet, and uh, we already tested. Uh, we have some tests, uh, uh, making sure it's all working well. Um, uh, so real quick, uh, real quick here, uh, we have an excellent momentum going on. Uh, you know, uh, we are working with uh, uh, different open source projects. Either we are using them for our needs, uh, or we uh, you know, working with them to increase the task card option. <coughs> um, and we're working with our stakeholders, right? So for example, on the left, uh, no one glance, that's the snippet I was talking about, uh, uh, the constraint-based uh, host and OS, uh, flavor and image. So if hit translator is uh, invoked uh, within OpenStack environment, um, then we uh, basically query against Nova uh, for a best match of uh, available flavor for the constraint. Uh, and again, uh, similarly, we query against Glance to find an image that uh, best match the constraint. If translator is used outside OpenStack uh, environment, uh, which is uh, pretty common, uh, then we have a predefined list of uh, flavor and image which are commonly used, and we basically find a best match from there and set it in the template. It's uh, you know, user's responsibility to, uh, to make sure those uh, flavor images are available into the environment when they deploy. On the adoption side, we are uh, we you know uh, we now have a Murano Tasca plugin available. We have an OpenStack client plugin out there, and just a few weeks back, we completed our integration with community app catalog. So all the Tasca templates are, uh, you know, can be browsed from apps.openstack.org. Um, on uh, Tasca adoption side, we have two important stakeholders, uh, Tacker and Open Platform NFV, or OP NFV. they both using Tasca parser and heat translator, and uh, their developers also contributing to both the projects. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, 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 you know, we are heat, or destination is heat, so we translate to hot and we deploy with heat. Um, so that's pretty much for me for now. Um, thanks, and I'll, I'll give it to Ricardo. Hi. So hi, hi everyone. Um, so my name is Ricardo. I'm I work at CERN in the OpenStack team. A uh, bit of background on what CERN is. Uh, some of you might have heard in other talks in other OpenStack summits. So CERN is um, built by 21 member states, and many other states are involved also in the collaboration. The main machine we have right now is the Large Hadron Collider, which is a particle accelerator 27 kilometers long, and it's uh, 100 meters underground. And that's the tool we use to accelerate uh, protons and generate collisions. So these collisions happen in specialized detectors around 600 million times a second. So it generates a lot of data that has to be analyzed. So I archive for further analysis later. So we're generating around 30 petabytes of data. There might be more data coming that is generated from this base data. So the CERN cloud right now, we're using OpenStack, and we have around 6,000 hypervisors, uh, 150,000 cores available, some 2,000 users, uh, active users of the cloud. And at any moment, we'll have 16, around 16,000 VMs uh, running. And we have a ratio of like 200 creations and deletions per hour. So it's kind of a pretty uh, big cloud. Then. One of the things that we do at CERN also, because we have all this data, we collaborate with a lot of institutions around the world. So traditionally, we've done this. Uh, there are multiple projects we've tried in, in the past. So grid computing is one that is very successful in distributing all this data and getting it analyzed. But for, for many institutions, now we are looking at other solutions. So the European Union funded uh, in the European Union Horizon 2020 program, they funded this pro pro project called Indigo Data Cloud. And this is a goal, its main goal is to have 
an infrastructure, software infrastructure that can be used easily for science for multiple communities, not only CERN, but many, many other uh, communities. CERN is more high energy physics, but also biomedical communities, earth observation, many other subjects in science. So there are many partners, I name here some. Uh, so INFN in Italy, CERN uh, in Geneva, and then UPV in Valencia, DAISY in Hamburg in Germany. So m many different institutions, both from, from research and uh, university, more related, and also from the industry. Uh, that joined as partners. So one of the main aspects of this is that many of them are using OpenStack, but a few are also using Open Nebula. So we, we had this uh, to take into, into account when designing the system. So the main th strengths of this project are to provide um, support for different scientific commu communities, to build on available solutions, so we don't want to de develop anything new. There's plenty of solutions there that we can build on. Uh, it has to be quick, so people don't have to have a very long installation uh, guide to follow. They just want to do their, their analysis. Uh, and then support this distributed and hybrid environment with both private and, and, and public clouds too. So I put some credits of people that helped a lot with the work that we are explaining here. So why Tosca? This is a bit uh, explaining our experience with Tosca, why we considered it and to see how we started using it and what the point is, uh, at what point we are now. So the first step was to consider what op options are there. We are inside CERN, we are uh, an OpenStack deployment and many other partners have the same setup. So heat was an obvious choice, but it has, uh, it, it's a specific to OpenStack. And CloudFormation had the same limitations. So we started looking around and with discussions with IBM and other people, we took Tosca as a viable common denominator, both for the topology of the system, so to d decide what goes into each site and to, and to just uh, orchestrate the whole thing, but also for people to start defining end users' ap applications in the same way, which was always a, a, a problem in the past. Uh, there was an existing code base, so the Tosca part, parse and heat translator were there, and you could just start trying it. And one big point is that there are um, libraries that we can reuse in other uh, contexts. So we can, for example, the heat translator and the Tosca parser. Tosca parser is being used by one of our partners in another system. The heat translator, we can also use it for, for translating uh, the same mechanism to that we use to translate from Tosca to hot. We could use it to translate to other formats. Uh, and there's growing support in different communities. So we started with very simple use cases. The first one was to deploy a single VM with a certain image and see if it worked. Then we started getting to our specific use cases. So one, one of them is batch processing. So we have a lot of data. We distribute the data, and then we launch jobs that analyze and, uh, uh, the data and give back results. We do this in a batch mode. Um, also in analysis mode for, for the physicists, but we do this in a batch mode for the reconstruction of the data. Uh, there are many systems in use that uh, the HEP and other communities in science are used to. So Torx, SLUM, and Condor are some solutions. Then, of course, uh, now a lot of people want to use uh, newer systems like Mesos or other container-based uh, uh, um, tools. And then one use case that came was from the biomedical uh, community, which they have their own portal where they just orchestrate uh, what is a batch cluster in behind, but they have a portal where the, the scientists will go to submit their analysis and say, I want to analyze this data with this algorithm and send my results, please, to this place. Uh, and then Indigo specific for the infrastructure jobs. So this is uh, more like how to package things and uh, how to get infrastructure to just just uh, keep running without so much attention. So these are all the use cases we consider from the start. So from here, I go to some examples. I hope you can read it. But uh, the goal is just to explain a bit uh, how, how it looks, Tosca. So if you're used to hot and, and heat, it's, um, it's not that different. It looks very similar. It's YAML. But then the constructs are, are a bit specific. So one thing in this example, uh, so we have here a simple node that we call Indigo Compute. And then we say we need public IP available, and we want these properties for, for the, this node. One thing that you will see is that this is not a basic construct existing in Tosca. So we have these custom types here imported. And that's where we define the needs we have. So what is an Indigo Compute node? If we look here, 
Tosca has the ability to define derived types. So you can say uh, an Indigo node, an Indigo compute node is actually an Indigo monitor compute. And this allows us to define common things in, in the same place. This is very similar to what you would do with heat. So in this case, we are saying, in addition to deploying uh, a Nova server, in OpenStack it would be, also configure a Zabbis server. This is the endpoint, and these are the extra metadata that I want. And then for the installation part, uh, as uh, Sadev mentioned, uh, in, in Indigo, we use Ansible templates for defining the installation and the several steps in the installation. So in this case, we are, in this case, we are saying, on creation, run this specific template uh, playbook, and then on this configuration and, and the start launch of the service use these different ones. And you can reuse properties that were defined in previous templates in Tosca. So then we translate it, and how does it look in the hot? So the same, the exact template I showed you would translate to something that if you're used to heat, it's very, sim it's very, it's very common. So it translates to a Nova server, and then it says the flavor that the person specified is small, and then he, they wanted this image. We need software config defines for, for the installation, and then what, what is a step in the installation procedure of Tosca? Just maps to a configuration uh, software config in heat. So it, it's, it's very direct. It, you won't see anything very surprising there. Then the Ansible integration was an important one. At, internally at CERN, we, don't, we, we use mostly Puppet, but in, in, in Indigo, uh, the decision was to use Ansible for most of the software installation. So in this case, what does it look like? Just to have, give you some details in the installation, it's just saying which package should run. These are very small examples. There would be um, more complex ones. And then for the configuration, it's just using some of the predefined variables to, to fill up the, the, the template in the configuration file. So then one thing that we started also is that um, of course, if you start defining a lot of these bits and pieces, one good thing is to use uh, Ansible uh, roles. So we use uh, the portal, Galaxy portal for, for Ansible, and we just pick up. So instead of having to define all the steps in each, in each uh, template, you just point to uh, an existing uh, role here, and then it just builds on it. Makes things a bit easier. So um, one good thing that came from this is that uh, through the work we did with IBM, we added the support to have multiple deployment and config options. So when you define in the heat translator anything that looks like YAML, we assume it's Ansible, PP is Puppet because we are also interested in that, and anything else is script. So you can hook in Python, Bash scripts, whatever you need to configure your system. And that, that works for us. Um, and then if you need something else, you can have a look, and uh, it's not hard to, to integrate this. So then we started looking at more complex examples. So, uh, the batch cluster, I, I will take the biomedical uh, case here. So the goal is to have a batch cl cluster with a portal in front. So the user don't, doesn't see any of the complexity of the system. It just sees a portal, and it goes there and says, I want to analyze this data with my algorithm. and then. There's a batch, batch system behind. In this case, we are aiming at Torque. And then there's one endpoint, en entry point for the batch cluster that takes the jobs. And then there's multiple worker nodes uh, that consume the jobs, run them, and send back the results. The main thing here to see is that if we would do this in heat, we could deploy it in, in, uh, in OpenStack easily. But as we have a diverse set of infrastructures, we wanted to be able to have one entry point but then have worker nodes running in multiple clouds. So it can be uh, in our cloud in, at CERN in Geneva, or it could be in a cloud in Valencia, or a cloud in uh, some of the partners in Germany, and then everything should just work. There, there shouldn't be any, any um, complication due to that. And by defining it in Tosca, then we can convert to the local uh, systems in each of the sites and reuse the same templates to deploy parts of the infrastructure. So that, that's one of the main benefits here. Again, an example, it's a bit hard to put this in templates because in, a, in a slide because the templates can grow quite a lot. But the goal here is an elastic cluster defined by our templates that has one front end and in this case, one or more worker nodes. So the front end looks like uh, the configuration of, of it will be an Ansible template that we refer to. But the main thing is that it depends on an actual server. So it requires a server with this 
properties, and then the template would define the Galaxy roles that, that are needed. Same for the, comp the worker nodes here. It says the host is required here, and then the description of what the worker node should, should be. And then this translates locally to the clouds as, as needed, and this is where we stop defining the infrastructure, which makes it quite easy. There's a lot of work then uh, at the infrastructure level to make all these pieces work, but this is what we've been doing with IBM by contributing upstream. So I'll just show a quick demo if this works. <laughs> just to ask. Oh. There we go. So, so th this is a very simple example, but it's just to get a feeling of how all it works. I uh, hope you can see it. Uh, so in this case, it's like the batch example. So the goal is to show you how to, there we go. So how, how this works. So I'll stop here. Uh, in this case, as I've mentioned, there's this tool called Heat Translator that takes a Tosca template and, and outputs whatever you need. So in this case, we're saying, take my Elastic Cluster template and generate Tosca, in this case, and to this output file. So then the, we actually copy it to another, we have this distributed file system inside, and then when, once we have the hot template, we can just submit it to Heat inside. So in this case, we are submitting to the cloud at CERN, we're generating exactly the same. If you use heat, this is all you, it, it took. We just generated the hot. We deploy the stack. The stack looks like this. It's building. So we'll wait a bit uh, for it to build. All the resources are complete. So we do a novel list. And we see, in this case, we only had an initial set of one server and one worker node. And they're both active. There's an IP that we took there. And now we can try to access the, the, um, the service. So as we mentioned, as I mentioned, this, this is a batch cluster. So the goal is to define a job and to run a set of jobs. So in this case, we have two PBS. Uh, Torque is PBS, uh, the tool. So PBS nodes lists the available nodes. And we see that uh, we have one node that was the one we, we deployed. Then we define our job. In this case, we'll define a very simple job, which is a batch script that just e echoes uh, a nice sentence there. And we'll try to deploy this into a batch cluster and see what the result is. So QSub is the submission tool for this system. And we stay here waiting that this uh, status changes to complete. So it's still executing, and now it's complete. So once it's complete, I can log in. So we, in this case, just to check what it did, we'll log in to the, to the box. Uh, in this case, we only had one worker node. So we'll log into the box and see what happened. So our worker node, IP, we log into that box, and we check the execution of the job. And it will just print whatever message we had in the beginning. So it's a very simple example, but you can see how the potential of this in, in terms of uh, large deployments. So we have other deployments that, uh, where is it? Oh, sorry. So we have uh, the same exact Tosca template is being used to, to do much larger deployments. So what we do is, um, yeah. So we, we use the same, we'll deploy the same front end node, and then we'll just scale the, the worker nodes to many sites and tens or hundreds of nodes as required. So right now we are building slowly. So we already have some clusters with, uh, with a few nodes, and eventually we'll scale, scale to a lot more. So in terms of the Indigo project and the status of Tosca usage, so the, use, the first use cases are already covered. Um, a lot of work we've done um, upstream with the IBM has been very positive. So for the Tosca parser, actually, the University of Valencia and Miguel has been doing a lot of work. Um, and the, at CERN, we've done uh, the integration with the heat translator for the requirements we had. And then one, one good thing is that there's the heat translator CLI, but actually there's integration also with the common OpenStack client tool. So if you, if you prefer that, it, there's integration there, and you can just deploy using a Tosca template. And there's integration with other APIs, which is, in our case is very important, because we need to uh, integrate with existing systems, and uh, having a, a, a better interface than the CLI tool is, is good for that. So coming next, we'll explain, uh, expand this deployment for more and more sites that are part of the project and then try to start use, using Tosca also for end-user applications. So this example was for the infrastructure. We want to have 
the specific applications of the users uh, defined in the same templates, and then continue contributing to the upstream. And with that, I give back to Sadev for some of the plans. Yeah, yeah. So just real quick, uh, uh, I know I will make sure Matt can talk too. And um, yeah, just real quick about the the Newton plan. Uh, we are uh, continue, uh, you know, uh, releasing uh, point releases. Uh, a, a matter of fact, next month we should have point five out, and then another uh, at least two releases uh, throughout the Newton cycle. Uh, as we work with the CERN and other members of Indigo, we should have more, uh, you know, need uh, come up, and we're going to work on them. Uh, we continue working with the Tagger project with the, some of the more complex NFE use cases, uh, and similarly with the Open Platform NFE team as well. Um, we have completed most of the work uh, against uh, SPAC uh, 1.0, but there are still a few items that uh, needs to be uh, worked on, you know, like a container support, uh, some of the uh, interesting function, etc. Um, and we're going to continue working, uh, growing the, uh, the ecosystem. Uh, th those last couple of things, so we already have some work in progress based on the stakeholder uh, feedback. We're going to let them pass, you know, uh, parameters as an input file. And lastly, uh, Horizon plugin uh, to enable uh, translation and deployment uh, from the dashboard instead uh, uh, to make it more user friendly. Uh, oh, thanks, guys. Uh, I'll hand it over to Matt for SPAC. So I'm here to tell you what's next and what cool things you should be looking for in, in Tosca, the standard. Um, so metadata. Uh, we added metadata a while ago to just the service templates. You could track special values and things you want to track through your templates through the system with the service template level. But now we've added it to all top level entities. So anytime you have a resource or a connection or anything like that, you can add metadata to track those things. Um, it's interesting to note, I'll talk about this later, but we actually have a metadata standard we've adopted in Oasis called TAG. So um, one of the big things we're doing in terms of uh, conformance is using the metadata for, for tagging service templates for test cases. So we can actually add the metadata information about which part of the spec you're testing, or if you implement your own um, schema for Tosca, you can actually uh, embed in the metadata a, a test standard if you want to. Uh, group type, uh, Sadev mentioned, we're advancing the group type. It's beginning to look more and more like a, a node in Tosca. Uh, it has uh, currently everything but um, artifacts. So basically, you can actually have a, a, a node abstraction that manages other resources as a group, and we're actually evolving that towards a, a cluster type as you see two, two bolts down. Um, policy definition, that's a big thing. I'll show in the next slide. Um, policy is very important. Sinlin project, if you guys are following that in OpenStack, has blueprints open to use Tosca for policy. They need some people to do the work. The blueprints are written. They're all approved. So uh, it would be nice to have a standard like Tosca be used instead of an ad hoc uh, format for policy in Sinlin. Um, cluster type I mentioned, 75% of the work's complete. We've agreed on how to implement standard representation of clusters for homogenous types of, of deployments, which again matches Sinlin. We're debating on how to do some heterogeneous things uh, in terms of um, different types of composite applications, and then they might scale or be clustered differently, have different considerations. We've handled, so we basically will have node types that will handle uh, be able to describe load balancing and routing and some very basic functions you expect from any cluster, whether it be a, a Nova cluster, a bare metal cluster, a Docker cluster, or even going forward, a serverless cluster, um, those types of things. Uh, workflow. Now, this is a very interesting area. So one of the big things we recognized in Tosca was that you know, it's all or nothing, typically. You know, if, if, when with task or heat, when you go declarative, it's basically saying, forget your imperative, leave it behind, or you, you have to rewrite your imperative to match it to certain things, like, I can only install with this script. I can only destroy with the script. Well, we're, we're actually have a, uh, we're very close to finishing workflow, where you can actually say, during, I want to take over certain state changes in Tosca. So if I want to take over the installation or configuration, I can say, I want this workflow where my Ansible or other scripts can take over, take you to completion and do configuration, do a bunch of stuff, and I'll put you back and tell you where you re-enter the declarative workflow. So it's a very cool thing we're doing in Tosca you'll see more of going forward. Again, we want people to preserve their value they have in their existing script languages where they have complex things they don't want to rewrite declaratively. So this is one of the major goals for, for Tosca. Um, next slide, policy, I wanted to show this because we actually have a model. It's important not just to have 
policies and name and say we're going to have policies these abstract things we actually have a concrete representation of policies based upon an event condition action model so basically we're focusing on operational policies so you can actually say there are a small number of tosca event types that can map to your target system in tosca they can map to a manasca event or a uh, salometer event of some type an alarm you have conditions that are evaluated based upon the state of the system that can fire an action, and those actions can be script actions or callouts to webhooks or services. So that's the concept. And if you, again, if you see Senlin, that matches well with Senlin's concept. If anybody's are looking forward to serverless technologies, uh, AWS Lambda, Lambda uh, OpenWhisk is a new uh, thing that IBM announced we're working on in the open community. Those all follow an event condition action triggering type model. Very cool stuff. Um, going forward, we can see we're very busy in many areas. I'm very excited about interoperability because everyone says to me, when we try to use Tosca, how do I know uh, as a standard if somebody implements it? You know, in OpenStack, we make sure we follow the standard. Someone else wants to do Tosca. Well, we're going to create conformance test suites. We're actually going to create a GitHub repo. We actually have one already. We're populating it with test cases. We're going to announce in May. So every part of the spec will have test case coverages coverage for uh, any Git repo, and people will be able to contribute their own test cases going along. So you'll be able to prove to yourself, if somebody comes to you with a Tosca tool, that they're conformant, whether they be a parser or whatever. Um, network function, that was mentioned by Sadov as well. The Tacker project is using Tosca. Uh, the entire Etsy community around uh, network virtualization needed a standard, and Tosca seems to be that standard. We can actually carry configuration data from Yang and other places, and we actually do that in Tacker. Um, and we're, we actually are about ready to complete the final version of the NFE profile for Tosca 1.0. It has things like how do you do comp composition, how do you define network functions, network services from virtual network functions, and in turn, they can be composed of even smaller granular units. And they, they have actually um, uh, forwarding paths, forwarding graphs. You can actually describe your network flows with Tosca, very cool stuff. Uh, instance model, we have a role gr work group talking about how you do management. How do you, after you have it running, how do I introspect and get out the running model? So the, the, the input now is a template, but after it's running for a period of time, it has policies, it's scaling, it's failing over, doing whatever it's doing. You wanna capture that state. You maybe, maybe you want to get the idea of something and manage it or introspect it. These are things we're doing and we're gonna define an API for instance model manipulation. Um, monitoring, ongoing work with the monitoring work group, you'll see some of the things in terms of um, uh, be used um, by the clustering stuff, by the policy stuff, to trigger uh, events that can fire, uh, evaluate rules to fire alarms if you're choosing. So you'll see these things, from, we're taking a very high level stance, we're doing type a, a, a green, yellow, red approach, saying you, you're in the green, you're in the yellow, and the red, and you need to pay attention. And you can actually derive your own granularities of events if you want to, but we're basically, from a, a um, portability standpoint, we're having a very high level uh, event monitoring type pluggable concept in Tosca. Uh, so those are the things we're doing, and uh, I just want to let everyone know that the Tosca 1.0 spec is done. Um, we had our 60 day review, it ended in December. We had comments, we answered, we finished our 15 day review in March. Um, we, the final standard is out there. It's been, it's just, it's been published. We're actually going to take it to final OASIS standardization uh, with a full uh, OASIS-wide company vote, and hopefully that'll be done by end of summer. So, um, if you're, no matter where you're using Tosca, whether it be in OpenStack or other places, you have a, you can, you can write tooling against the standard. It's not going to change. We're going to track errata. You have, you have complete um, faith that a group of companies are going to maintain that standard, and not yank or change things out from underneath you. So, that's all.